Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. In the last episode, we explored some more of the cave systems and found quite a few areas to be too difficult for us. <laughs> Which I suppose includes, by the way... That area that's bullcrap <laughs> involves the Minecracker sledgehammer, which we wouldn't be using. <laughs> We'd just be selling it for a little bit of cash. So you can stay down there at the moment. Uh, we then came up here and found the Hakate Research Station, where we found some information about Super Steel after killing quite a few giant coil spiders. I think they were our first coil spiders we encountered, but I can't remember if it, they were. In any case, we were victorious there, and we also defeated two Death Stalkers, so it took quite a bit of work to do that. And we've almost hit level 20. In fact, we're so close to level 20 that we're just going to skip the summary on the hope that we actually level to 20, potentially on the way back to Core City, since we need less than 200 experience points. There's a bunch of rat hounds right around the corner here that might give us what we need. They also might not. But let's let's find out. And start the killing. 35 experience points for an alpha. We might do it. We might do it, viewer. Might happen here. Okay, that was three. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining, but it was three 95% chances to miss in a row that we missed. The record for me is five 95% chances to miss in a row with Gabriel on my way to Junkyard from Southgate Station during the early portions of the game. I was so enraged. <laughs> like, come on now. That's a silly amount of 95% chances to hit that missed. There's no reason why we should let them get easy hits on me, so we'll sprint away a bit. Try setting them on fire. Use all the abilities we've got. Actually, they'll run away anyway, since they are aggro since they are terrified of fire. That's like seven ninety-five percent chest. It's six. It's six. Game hates me at the moment. We should we should not be recording it. Yes. Room cleared and we leveled. Perfect. Get all their creature bits. We might be overburdened. By the time we're done with this. Yep, okay. So let's break down some of this leather. For some armor. Not the pig leather, though. Not the pig leather. Alright, then we can break down that armor. Four bits, which will bring me under the weight allowance. Okay. And we can walk around a bit. I don't think there's anything else in here. And we did just level, so let's go ahead and level up to level 20. Alright, so... Let's quick save first. I, th I don't even think I need to look up my build, because I know what I'm doing here. First, we're going to put a point into Intelligence. We should regenerate one more side point with this. But that's... Do we get another psionic slot at Intelligence 8? I think we might. I think it's every two points? We'll take a look together. For our skills... We're going to improve melee and evasion. Metathermics. 
and the rest of this goes into tailoring to bring it to 101 and it matches our mechanics. And it will sit there for the rest of the game. We get a feat. I took Intelligence 8 this time because I finally will be taking the... What's it called? Psychoneuroflexibility. One Psy School is ignored when determining the multi-school innervation Psy cost penalty. There we go. So we reduce the Psy cost of all my abilities by 10%. And for specialization, we also get to lower the cooldown on premeditation by one turn. Alright. Done. Let's now get back to Core City. I suppose we'll stop by... Leonie, really quick, outside Foundry, just to see if she's selling some amazing uh, Thai chrome or something. Oh, there's dogs here. Almost forgot about you guys. Oh, 82% chance. It's not a bad chance to hit them. Oh, but now we're going to be... Oh, yeah. Overburdened again. Too many hearts. Darn it. We got to drop something. Well, we don't need all the hearts. So we can leave them in the medical locker. <laughs> we could also take out the drugs that were there. Oh, there's a little oddity point item in here in case you hadn't found all the train schedules or whatever that was. I want to get this on the map since we're here really quick. By that I mean get rid of all the fog of war. There's no hostiles here if I recall correctly. Right, there we go. We can say... Uh, did not explore east. Search the rest of those barrels, and then we've made it to Foundry. We don't really have much for Foundry in terms of wanting to sell stuff there, so we'll just ignore the actual uh, city. But I do want to visit Leone really quick. Since we're right here in this area. Soda. Hello, everyone. Good evening. It is the same day. It is January 30th, 2024, but it is 6 o'clock when I'm recording this particular part. I uh, ended up falling asleep earlier today. I don't like it so tired these days. All right, let's see. So what are you selling? 141 quality. 141 quality. That's good. That's very good. But I don't need it, so... Thank you, Leone. If it was 150-ish, I might purchase it to have it for the future for a energy spear. And I'd make one super steel spear and one energy spear in the for the future. Okay, so back to Core City for us. With my increased tailoring, no, I would say it's tempting to be to try to make some even better armor than what we're currently wearing, but we're not going to get the high quality component parts for quite some time. So we'll stick with the armor we currently got, I guess. Though it's tempting to put back on our old armor. Alright, well first off, let's visit our barrels. And get some stuff stored in them. This one in particular. Okay, so, all of this... Whatever it is, gets shoved in there. 
<laughs> I, hit, I hit sort. I can I can only imagine the how wretchedly horrible that this barrel smells. Then we're going to be doing an arena battle. So let's go ahead and have a cave hopper stake to improve my initiative just a bit. And then we want some drugs. So Heidi, hello. I want all the morphine she has. I think I'm okay with everything else at this moment. Actually, no, we want bandages too. So let's take all let's take all the bandages. Okay. I suppose, you know, I was just mentioning how I don't really alter my gear or, or tactics, depending upon who I'm fighting, but I might here. Who are we fighting, Gary? Tim. Fierce, as always. Who's my next opponent? This opponent is going to be Master Exploder, a mute grenadier. Little was known about him. Well, then the fact he revels in blowing his opponents to bits. He himself wears a blast suit, naturally, so keep that in mind. Use cover and take him out fast, or else you'll be going to end up splattered all over the arena. Good luck. Right, so we don't want a different outfit for this. He uses grenades and pyrokinesis. He's immune to being set on fire, so we're just going to have to rush him with our spear. Here to cause even more carnage, Firestarter? I'm ready for my next match. Your next opponent is... Master Exploder! Now, this is your first fight as a gladiator, so keep calm and... I don't know, dominate him. Ready to go, Firestarter? Start the match. Mmm... Don't you love seeing blown-off limbs flung through the air? He's got a grenade launcher! Our beloved Master Exploder has been quenching our bloodthirst for years with his explosive and fiery personality. And now he'll be up against our newest addition to the Grand Gladiator family. Firestarter. This young gladiator shows no mercy, no fear, only domination. But will our young gladiator's limbs remain attached after this fight? Let's wait and see. We go first. He can't really move very effectively in that suit. We'll move right up to him. We might as well use the morphine now. And smack him. Both of those worked. We're going to use Recurrence. Let's see what he does. Poor Master Exploder. Oh, wow. Well, that was disappointing. Beautiful Carnage! Let's count the limbs on Firestarter! One, two, three... Also, my math is very bad. Our gladiator still has all four limbs still attached. I guess Master Exploder was no match for our brutal fire starter. Well done. Dearest Maniacs, that's it for today. See you next time and stay bloodthirsty. Poor guy. He just ran up and just bunked him. Oh, that stinks for him. Oh, he's got a special grenade launcher. Milcor MGL. This old world 40mm six shot revolver type grenade launcher. Simple, lightweight, despite its age, still reliable. Tons of grenades. A blast suit, which we're just going to break down. 
and quite a few drugs. So we, we don't care about the blast suit. Oh, or do I? Maybe I do care about the blast suit. We can hold on to it at the moment and just store it with, with the rest of our stuff. Good, good, good. I guess you weren't blown away by Master Exploder. <laughs> you know the drill. Take this. It gives you four Stygian coins. See you later. All right, so. Where to now, Tim? Gary, who's my next opponent? Chemical agent. Name says it all. I don't know where that guy came from, but he's one repulsive creature. Not much of a challenge on his own, but he's got this far thanks to a pair of mutated dogs. Those critters rip numerous challengers and glares apart like nothing. So get yourself some anti-corrosive protection. It's the best advice I can give you. Watch out for his pets. Good luck. Do you also watch the gauntlet? Yes, but to be honest, I'm not nearly as delighted by it like I am with the arena. It's fun, it's violent, it's death. But watching gliders face each other with the only one thing in mind and executing it in the most violently entertaining way possible is much more appealing to me than pulling a lever at the end. The gauntlet also lacks a live crowd, which to me detracts from the experience. After all, hearing so many mouths screaming kill, kill is something I can never get tired of. In the end, I suppose it's an entertaining gimmick to most, but it will never ever match the arena. Alright, see you later, Gary. We do not do the gauntlet here. I hate the gauntlet. I hate it. <laughs> oh, man. That was... It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be the one time I did it. Which it, which it involved a lot of reloading. And I... In the end, it's uh, it's not something I will choose to do again. We already do have a biotechnician suit. Okay, we don't have a blast suit. We'll hold on to you at the moment. All right, and we hold on to the power fist. That means we can break down this suit. Okay, and now it's time to do a little bit of repair work. Our spear could use some repairs. And as could our dagger. So... The grenade launcher might not be worth full repairing. But we'll... Let's see. Uh, I don't think it's worth doing it. But I've already started, so we'll finish repairing it. And since it's an old world weapon, I wonder... I don't think this can be improved by the gentleman in Rail Crossing. But we'll hold on to it and bring it to him in the off chance it maybe could be later. Okay, so... That is all the stuff. Let's see if the merchants here are cycling their inventory. Hello, Oscar. You did. He wants three firearms. He'll probably buy some suits as well, so let's take a few of those. We can repair this suit while I'm here. Scar, let's see. He's selling the minigun blueprint, but I don't think I, I was, I'm not going to purchase it. Let's see. So we should take away, we should try to get all his cash to start. And that's going to be all of it. Then we can take a few weapon bits. Not likely to find. No, don't buy better. You don't need better armor, Tim. You have armor that's decent enough already. We 
Let's, can I get this as well? It's a ballistic vest. We can see about making some armor. Do I even have a tactical vest blueprint? I do. I need a ballistic panel, which is not what this was. I don't think I have any ballistic panels even stored here. In fact, I, I know I don't. Garcia. Not buying anything I have. Actually, she's buying one suit of leather armor, so we can probably sell her this vest. And we'll just take some cash. We can stop by Halim's and sell the psionic trainer that we picked up that we can't utilize. Oh, I forgot we had Kredrak Barrier. We should actually learn that skill. There we go. And you don't have anything I think I'm interested in. No better shield. Okay, so let's move on. I think, viewer, it is time to join a faction in Core City at this point. We haven't even explored Core City. Not entirely. We just, we've only been going to the merchant so far. There's a bunch of uh, gangs and thugs we're going to want to uh, tackle here as well for the experience points and loot that they might possess. Oh! Darn it! And I also do want to go and visit Foundry. So we have some plans for there. For the um, Super Steel. But that can wait. That can wait. Let's begin advancing the story a little bit by joining one of the factions. Our first time in the upper residential area as well, which means we get to pick everyone's pockets. I don't think our dex is that much higher than it was, though. Yeah, which means I don't get a chance. To, I can't, unfortunately, pick Sniper's Pockets yet. Hello, old lady. Yay, from around here. Can't wait to go to the arena again. Greetings. Watch your step in Core City. There are so many places you could fall off and, you know, get injured. Oh, thank you. You can also injure yourself if you have things in your pockets, like that eel sandwich we're going to take from you. <laughs> Oh, Tim, you're awful. Core tech. This is the this is the group for us, uh, viewer. We want access to higher level electronics because electronics is what we'll be taking to 101 points next. When it comes to crafting, that's going to be four levels, I think. Should be done by level 24. We do not need the leather it's like stealthing stuff from jkk and we don't need any of the metal related equipment from the praetorian guard either so let's say hello and see if they decide they want to hire me take their plasma cells Hello, we oh, hello, receptionists. Pockets. Of course, we do this first. Fifteen coins or lunch money. We can't hide from the sentry. Okay, well, let's talk with her. The young woman meets your approach with a chalk white smile and a polite greeting. 
Greetings, sir, and welcome to Cortec. How may I help you? What can you tell me about Cortec? Cortec is a primary technology research, manufacturing, and application company in Core City. Being a successor to the great BioCorp, Cortec employs some of the brightest minds in solving difficult problems of today. Cortec's desire to create a better future for everyone through technological advancement remains unmatched. I'm looking for work. Do you have anything available? Most certainly. Cortec is a top technology research and application company in Underrail. You have several open positions in the fields of geophysics, chemistry, and ballistics. Could you please specify your qualifications so that we may proceed? How about a tailor? I can design and make you wonderful lab coats or security uniforms. Imagine. Tim's Coreware. Clothing of the future. Today. Uh... We don't have an open position for that. But we might have something else available. Could you please tell me your full name? Tim! Allow me to do a quick check on you. She starts typing something on the keyboard. Huh. I see. You seem to be in luck, sir. We do have a position available. Please, if you'd like, talk to Mr. Joseph Harland. He's in the office right next to this one. Down the hallway, first door to the left. Oh, and before you go, I also need to inform you that the upper floor is off-limits to all non-employees. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'll go see him. Hello, Cortec Runner. Absolutely search your pockets for stuff we need. Focus stem. Always take the focus stems because we can't make them quite yet. Or for quite some time. By my calculations, you're new here. Have you seen Dr. Bronson anywhere? I need to discuss the Neurosim project with him. That name sounds familiar to me. Didn't we see that? Oh no! She got away. Didn't we see that name in the one of the research uh on one of the research papers? I think we did. I think these little rooms are useful if you do plan on stealthing through this area. Hello, scientist. Sorry. But you're in standing in a room. It's your room, but your the door wasn't red, which oh. This is awkward. You reached to your pockets, you didn't have anything. Some nice little resting rooms, or rather, uh, overnighters, I guess, for people. It's an honor to be working for Cortec. It's an honor to be searching your pockets as you are honored to be working for Cortec. Take the plasma cell. A recycle bin that's not searched. It has nothing in it. <laughs> Just some scraps. So how do you zoner people spend your free time? I'm not a zoner. I find it quite disappointing that the robotized service program never came to rotation. I'm sure you perform your task here with satisfactory results. Thank you. First of those is searching your pockets for stuff. That's a fantastic galvanic vest. Well, uh, mid-range. We'll still take it. A flashbang grenade blueprint. Don't mind if we do. I don't think I've ever searched the scientist pockets, all of them in this area. The sisters stand here just like s statues. Might as well search them. We can't really get anything from the sniper. We're not allowed in that room. Nothing in that recycle bin. Oh, look at all the rooms here. There's nothing in these, right? Like, there's no... I don't think there's any lockers of the like in any of these. For us to search. Like, oh, there is! I'm going to take some of the things from that. Oh, hello. Someone walks into this room, but then leaves it. Oh, no! Oh god, that was so close. Holy crap. <laughs> right when the guard's there. That's a that's a red door. That's a red door, which means it requires us to lockpick it when no one else is around. Hello, two scientists. You ever pondered time of the time travel paradoxes? I can't can't say I have. Have you though? You have not. At least there's nothing in your pockets that indicate you have. Working for Cortec is a dream come true. I can imagine it is. You get you have a nice little room here. 
Get a bunch of research done. Have some nice balconies. Oh, the upper floor is off limits, so we're not allowed up there. I do want to see what's inside this room. But with people walking around, the moment I go for that door is the moment... Yeah, someone's going to walk out. Alright, so she's walking down a different path now. Okay, here comes that runner. I don't think we searched this guy's pockets yet, so we'll do that right here. We did not. We'll take the focus stem, giving us three of those. Even though it's not red, I'm pretty sure if we open that door, we start combat. So we'll just wait until the runner goes around the corner, and then we'll give this an open and see what's inside this room really quick. This requires a hacking check, I think. Just staring at the door. Just don't mind me. Look at all the wardrobes. Stuff. More stuff. Things. Okay, not bad. We got a scope. 104 electroshock generator. And another carrier vest. Gavin, a carrier vest. All right, some stuff we can probably vendor to someone. And now let's check out Mr. Harlan. I think that was his name. The man behind the desk greets you with a closed-lipped smile, one you'll find almost never leaves his face, while his superficially good-natured eyes are almost always focused on you, scrutinizing every motion you make and seem capable of picking up every single detail, no matter how minuscule it might be. It is an inescapable feeling, and it is making you suddenly become self-conscious of your appearance and behavior, and how will any of that reflect on the interview you're about to have? Welcome, Tim. I'm Joseph Harland, and it's a pleasure to meet you. I'd like for us to move on to the reason why you're here, if you don't mind, so if you're interested in... So, you're interested in working for Cortec? Yes, I most definitely am. That's great to hear. You radiate enthusiasm, I can say. You might find it surprising, but I'm positive you're the right person for the job I'm about to offer you. Or as numerous residents of Core City would say, you'd dominate it. What exactly is the job you're talking about? I'll be honest with you, Tim. Cortec, because of its wealth, status, and importance to the city, has numerous enemies trying to bring it down. It's a sad state of affairs, I know, but that's how the state of this world is that we live in. Of course, we have our own security forces. However, their effectiveness against more... I can't pronounce this word, so we're going to skip it against threats. Some threats is quite limited. Certain threats. We are in need of someone who can act as a low-profile agent, is capable and willing to, and can accomplish tasks effectively without ever being associated with Cortec, should he be compromised. Now, I must make one thing clear. We aren't talking about any illegal or immoral affairs here, or anything similar. We simply seek our safety and our prosperity of Core City, and for that it is sometimes necessary to act in the way I've described. Are you interested? How do you know you can trust me? We know. We have our ways. Sounds like we're being we're going to be disposable to them. But we still want to join them. You can count me in because we want access to the shop that has a bunch of electronic stuff in it. He smiles. Excellent. Those words mark the beginning of a very important chapter in your life, Tim. You are now an employee of Cortec and are free to move about around most of the building. Some areas are off limits, of course. You will be paid for each individual job accomplished. Generously, rest assured. And last but not least, your safety is guaranteed within the Cortec building. I notice you are quite a combat-ready sort of person, but in here you may be at ease. He walks to one of the wardrobes and grabs two Mate black zip bags, one large and bulky, the other small. He puts them on the colleague's, his colleague's desk and unzips the large one first. This is your uniform, state-of-the-art energizing vest. It provides good ballistic protection, but more importantly, it can keep your equipment powered up via wireless energy transmission. Then he opens a smaller one. And this is your tactical respirator. It's lightweight and comes with dual filter canisters, smart lenses, and other integrated devices. 
He puts the empty bags aside and turns to you. With that out of the way, I can say I already have a task for you. Sure, I'm ready for my first task. Good. Your first task, Tim, is to find one of our agents who has recently disappeared. He is known under the pseudonym Raul. Uh, Raul. Wow. Raul. He shows you an image of a black man with dreadlocks. Take a look at this picture. Notice a distinctive scar on his right cheek. He should have returned from his task several days ago, yet he stopped communicating with us right around that time. He was last seen entering Core City's sewer system. The sewers are not the most hospitable place, but I can say, but the faceless are one more reason why you must take extra care while going there. Find out what happened to Raul, and then return to me. What was he doing in the sewers? He was on a confidential mission, the details of which I can't reveal to you. Alright, I'm on the job. Good. I'll be waiting. And we get... A very good helmet, which offers better bioprotection than the gas... Oh! Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually offer better gas protection than the gas mask. But it doesn't penalize us for perception or detection while it's equipped. So... Oh, but it also doesn't have an armor penalty. That's interesting. While it's equipped, damage of special ranged weapon attacks, which we don't possess any of, is increased by 25%. This does not affect unconditional effects. It also increases our detection by 50%. That's interesting. So it's not quite as good as it. So it's not quite as good as either of these are individually, but it has statistics of both. So I guess we'll leave both of these at home now. And our Cortec Energizing Vest, the CT. MEN2 is a tactical vest which integrates a state-of-the-art wireless energy transmission technology that can be used to power any devices in the immediate vicinity, regardless of whether it was designed for it or not. This required the vest to be overcoated with special conductive material that also has a secondary benefit of providing protection against energy attacks. It's not a bad suit of armor, and only 15% armor penalty for it, too. We're not using energy, energy pistols, so we don't have the critical hand chance of that. We don't have any hacking, but it would improve our hacking by 10. We do take extra electrical damage from all electrical sources by 20%. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get the first task completed, I suppose. We'll stop by our barrels to put stuff in it first, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, so let's do that too. We will explore Iden Pick's Pocket. We're going back. <laughs> we are going back! For Harlan's pockets. I don't remember what he has in them, but we're, gonna, we're not going to leave them unsearched. We searched everyone else on this floor. Sorry, Harlan. We forgot to do one important thing. That's the standard Tim greeting. It, it's really awkward, I know, but we I want to search your pockets. Uh, we can take his advanced mechanical repair kit. And put that to good use. All right, so. Let's go. Back to the commons area. Oh, I should check for grenades. Oh, not the common area, sorry. Well, now that I'm here, let's check the merchant really quick. Let's check Mo. Hmm. Take some side beetle soup. There's no reason to carry this stuff around with me that I don't intend on using, so we'll leave some of the stuff behind. Check for grenades. And I guess we'll clear we'll we'll do the quest, and then in the next episode, we'll clear the sewer system. And we'll begin clearing Core City of the muggers and the other gangs which are present here. And then we'll do an arena battle as well. Oh, I want to sell stuff to these people. Let's see. Hello, Oscar. I'm not interested in selling the scope, though. I guess we can sell the mask. But you don't have anything... We'll just. I guess we'll just hold on to it. Gas mask, the best goggles we have at the moment for detection. So we'll charge the suit. Are you going to wear the suit? 
The problem is I know where we're going. <laughs> the problem there is that I know there's coil spiders. Which means I don't really want to have the energizing vest with me. So we'll just leave this behind as well. We could probably afford to take a few more batteries. I don't think Dersia wants anything I currently have in my inventory. She does not... Oh, she does want a shock bolt. We can sell her that for 10 credits. I don't really need these things either, but we'll just store all of it. Okay. Oh, grenades, Tim. You want to check for MK3 grenades. We're bringing dynamite with us. And enough of it that I can skip a difficult battle down there. But we may want to do it anyway. It's a bunch of Psy Beetles. I think two or three Goliaths and the rest are like four or five little beetles on hard mode. You have a single MK3 frag. We'll take that. Okay, so to the sewer system. Wouldn't be a game that has, like, a dungeon -y game if you didn't have a sewer level, right? <laughs> All right, let's get this done. I think there's some extra places to explore down here too, if I recall correctly, that were added in one of the other patches that added more dungeons to the game. Hello, Siphoner. Wow, wiped out. We'll take all your creature bits. Locked, not allowed that way. More rat hounds. Oh, might as well kill them. They're worth experience points, and we could use all those that we can get. I will just stay put. Eighteen damage on that attack. My goodness, that hurt. Trash. The way is blocked by hazardous waste. Getting through would be a monstrous effort. I wonder. At one point, you can become a mutant if uh, you get unfortunate enough to inhale this one type of mutagen. I wonder if you're able to get here and clear the trash if you're in that form. It's not possible to beat the game normally, to my recollection. If that happens to you. I do wonder if you can make some progress at some of... Uh, if you can explore certain areas that would normally be off-limits to you. I think there's another siphoner. I think there's two of them. Maybe I'm... Okay, I was, I was correct. Oh, 262 critical. Of course, we didn't need it. Leather armor? 52? Not better than the 54 we're wearing. You can't clearly see the bottom from up here. junk or scrapture we're already at a hundred pounds because all the stuff we found down here all the hearts 
intestines that we're, we're, we're getting. I'm not allowed this way either. Notice it doesn't give us a lockpick attempt, nor does it tell us we need a key. So there's something special about that door, I think. You know, let's do a little bit of fishing while I'm in this area, and then we'll go ahead and put the stuff back in our barrels, since we picked up a ton of hearts and what have you. Actually, actually it wasn't a ton. It was just a little bit. But I want them dropped off someplace else. I don't think you can get shrimp from the sewer system. Looks like we're not getting anything from here. You know what? No, Tim. Let's, let's push on. We're going to kill a few more creatures in this area anyway. Agility 10. We have agility 7. No, 8. Cave Hopper Steak and Agility uh, Cave Hopper Boots would allow us to leap over that. Can we maybe... So the trap here is making it so I can't cross this. But maybe we can get something's attention on the other side of that. And we can. Oh. Well, we're not killing that guy. Rick the Rat won't be able to reach me if we move over here. Oh, can't no, he can't reach me from there either. So I guess we'll temporal distortion this guy. That is not enough to kill him. Put another one on him. Oh, it's a crawler bolt. I thought it was a burr or poison. Why, which, why I didn't do anything. Oh, that's a shame. Poor Rick the Rat. <laughs> he gets to sit, to stand there, staring at the wall, being like, Man, I wish Stig didn't put that trap right there, because I'm not allowed to walk over it. You, you really should just walk into it. I mean, you're dead anyway, Rick the Rat. Now, we have to walk on top of it, because we can't disarm this uh, this trap. We can't, right? My goodness, I haven't equipped the uh, jackknife ever in, in this Let's Play yet. Let's see if we can actually disarm this. I don't think we can. No, we can't. Critical failure, in fact. Just stand here and take it, I guess. Let's charge our shield a little more. Heal that wound we just took. What do you guys have on you? The claw! An improvised weapon made from the paw and the claws of a rat hound. 8 through 14 mechanical and 1 through 3 bio damage. Chance to inflict bleeding wounds, contaminate living targets, like making them take more damage. Not a bad thing to find, I guess. Uh, I don't need anything else that's on his corpse. 
This beauty has a trash crossbow. We'll just break that down for bits. And the claw. Never going to use it. We'll break, we'll break it down too. Five bits. Well, then it's actually worth selling instead for uh, a few charons. And what were you guys guarding? A barrel. There should be a ladle in this. Yep. Two oddy points. A bacon and cheese sandwich was cooking in there along with that ladle. And a lockpick and some metal scraps. Interesting choice of things to eat. A trap door. I wonder where that goes. We're gonna mark. That there is a trap door there. going. Looks like we're going to be clearing most of the sewer system after all. We have the agility to jump over this. We'll come back and explore the rest of the sewer later then. I think this is where we want to go. That sounded bad. That sounded like some sort of uh, power turning on. Electrical switch being hit. Let's see if that destroys that camera for us before we go any further. This also gives me a chance to see if I just ruined this encounter. No, okay. They, they don't need the camera in here for this to occur. Even in the faint light, you're able to clearly make out the grimace of the person standing on the other side of the glass window. Despite being separated by a physical barrier, you feel devoured by his baleful eyes. Strangled by his clenching hands, you can almost hear the cracking of your bones with his grinding teeth. His silent, malevolent scrutiny makes you feel more and more uneasy about this predicament. This foul, repulsive creature has you trapped, as you see no obvious way to escape. Luckily, before your mind can conjure up any horrifying ways for the dreadful event you find yourself in to unfold, the man speaks. Isn't it my lucky week? You people just keep coming, yes. Guess it's going to be quite a feast. Hmm. You'll do just fine. <laughs> feast, uh. What are we having? <laughs> You're not the sharpest tool in the box. No, no. It doesn't matter. I need you for food anyway. I don't care about the rest. I think I'll start with your eyeballs. Hmm. He laughs. If you don't release me this instant, you'll regret it. I will. I will release some electricity through your body, he laughs. Laughs maniacally. No, no! This shouldn't have happened. No! Damn faulty wiring. Damn it. You stay put! I don't think we will. I don't think we will. We don't have any hacking. So we have 10 hacking. We have no hacking. Oh, hacking tools. So we're not getting through that way. There are traps present. Let's equip our detection mask. Hope you guys like coil spiders because we're getting more of them here. Yep. Gotta be careful, Tim, as you advance through this. Not 
so quill spider webs and a quill spider okay he's up in that corner well that was lucky quill spiders have a great amount of agility too they tend to go first when they act don't know where the traps are. Alright, let's let it see us and move away. Good, we got a crit which guaranteed the kill. I think this area had been the first time through the game, the very first time I had encountered coil spiders. And I was amazed to find something uh, like a giant daddy long legs as an enemy in the game, and something I hadn't seen before. Since I've been playing the game for quite some time and died to just about every single thing on the way. Oh no. Okay, so... I don't know if that's a safe place to go and investigate, since I don't know if there's any other webs in the area. That did not kill it. Oh, the crit got through my shield. Oh no. Well, that's it! <laughs> One lucky crit! One lucky crit and we're dead! Uh, come on now. Alright, we gotta do it again. Ow! Oh! Let's see if anything comes to investigate that and kills us again. Of course. I'm still stunned. Effing really? One second. One second left on the timer, and it resets me to entire one entire round of combat. Screw you too, Stig. All right, was, this is just embarrassing. Uh, okay, let's do this again. Should have saved the game after I killed the coil, that one coil spider. up look for traps I'm gonna wait here till I see the close spider patrol because I know it comes down here and I'll try killing that one all right I can't believe it, the crit killed us there That should kill it, so we shouldn't have to worry about it. Wow. The normal spiders are worth 274 experience points, too. That's incredible. I mean, I'm glad they're worth a good amount of experience points. Since they are, they're basically insta-kill you enemies if you weren't prepared for them. And even if you were prepared for them, apparently, they are still that. <laughs> Save the game again. Right, let's see. How can you kill a greater coil spider up there but the little one, given the amount of space that you have? We have, to, we have to run around corners to make them run around corners, too. But we've learned their melee attacks, once again, are super strong. 
we're not really prepared for melee attacks on coral spiders either. There's where that one crawled and died. Oh, there's a coral spider over there, I see. Just standing there, menacingly. Oh, we're not even we're not, we're not allowed to travel in that area. Interesting. A character's smart enough that he won't walk into a trap unless it's the only way for him to access what I'm clicking on. You know, we have to kill the spiders, viewer. We have to, right? Oh, that didn't get its attention. Are you walking right there? Really? That was so lucky that we just didn't die to that trap right there. Wow. Okay, that was f lucky. I love to. S Can I do this? Sprint is off of cooldown. I'm going to recurrence. And then sprint around the corner, because we know we have a grater around there. Oh! But the grater is not investigating. Oh, yes it is. We're dead if that sees me and gets another shot off on me. I can't charge it. If I move up... The little one is not dead yet. I don't think I'll have to worry about it. We're going to use some morphine and move up. Oh no. Looks like we're committing. I don't, uh, like we're gonna have to use some adrenaline here. We're going, we're going for the big one. Nope! <laughs> Not if I miss! Alright, that was a 95% chance to miss. Apparently. We, I don't know how we're, we can't kill it if we miss. Uh, we just have to run. Oh, we're, we're, and, and we're effing dead. Yeah. Could have done it if we didn't miss, but missing a 95% chance to hit? Nope. We're, we're doomed. Good God. This is awful. <laughs> this is awful, viewer. What an awful place this is. Move up. Do this crap again. Didn't that time do anything to it. We run around the corner. Activate the shield. Still in combat, so the greater one's on the way. Okay, this might have worked out, though. That was a fantastic critical. I'm going to recurrence. And I shouldn't have. Okay, good. I 
things like these are why I classic mode is my preferred way to play since we wouldn't be earning any points for killing these things otherwise I highly doubt now we know there's another little one at least right I mean, technically, you don't have to kill any of the Coil Spires here. You can worm your way through these caverns without fighting a single one of them. Oh, no. Did we... Just go... Might as well just reload the game. <laughs> We're just dead again. All right, well, no problem. We'll just reload. What is this? Six deaths in this room alone? Half of what we've had for the entire game so far? Good God. I love it. So there's two... Oh! Wow! You're just standing right there! Is it just you two, or is there a greater one in the area as well? Well, we're charging. Let's use some morphine. And try to charge this little one. Once again, the morphine blessing comes into play. Where apparently, if we just use it, we win without ever having to utilize the morphine. See you, little skeleton. Some cash and some Southgate Station credits. We'll search this remain as well. More egg sacks. We don't get anything from egg sacks any longer. Okay. Is that all of them? I think so. <laughs> I think so. So normally, if you didn't bring any dynamite or a, ja a jackhammer with you, you would be forced to go up here. We brought dynamite with us, so we won't have to worry about these rocks. I'll try this room for you viewers, but it is not a pleasant experience from my recollection. guy died trying to escape apparently thankfully we have the tools necessary that we'll, we should be able to handle the gentleman who trapped us all right let's do this that's a cluster of them we definitely want to kill clusters if we can Didn't quite go where I wanted it. We got two of them and hurt a Goliaths. Should be safe. Uh, there's no reason not to activate the shield, Tim. So that's an issue because we can't. There's three of them. I suspected there was three. Let's try setting a bunch of them on fire. Okay, got three, which is good. If I'm about to kill this one, this thing kills us, so we can't do that. up and slow it. Unfortunately, we have to deal with it now. I can't afford the wait a turn. We couldn't send, maybe set it on fire, though, so let's try that. We succeeded. Let's 
gonna run away. Can I chase it? Uh, you better be able to run away, Tim, after this. I hate you, game. Missing a 95 is never fun, especially when I need death to hit. You still have your head down, which means we're going to take a giant hit. Oh, or not. Two of you. One of you should be immune to fire. Doesn't mean you're not immune to the damage it deals, though. This one's running away. This one is not. Okay, this was not difficult in the end. Good God, those misses, though. <laughs> those misses. We've gotten through so much of the game without them so far. It's good to see the game remembers that it's under rail, not some, not some other game. <laughs> Now, what do we get from these? Some side beetle carapaces, which are all going to be low level and just trash. 9mm Luger Limited, uh, sorry, Laser Sight. That's actually worth keeping and uh, selling. Let's see. It's also slightly damaged. How's our weapon be holding up? We could use repair. That armor, though, is trash. As are all of these little side beetle carapaces. Oh, I forgot. We have some armor, so... Rather, we have some leather. And then we can recycle them. Okay, what does this gentleman have on him? Some dynamite to get you through the rocks. Fate has decreed that you should be allowed to do that. Garbage, garbage, and core city plans. Once again, we'll go ahead and make some, i oh, sorry, break down the boots. You know, I should have made normal boots instead of tabby boots. Just to see if, if, how different those would be with the uh, leather. It's too late now. Of course, we don't get any side beetle carapaces from the giant goliaths, which would be what we want them want from them. Oh, there! Oh, never mind. We did. Quality 100 as well, which is fantastic. We'll see what that can construct for us. Okay, see? Enough cursing and swearing at the game, and it will, like, shut up! Here, take it! <laughs> Just shut up! Thank you, game. We still, yeah, but say, do still have on our detection goggles, which we didn't need fighting the Psy Beetles. But we will want them in this area. As you can see, there's traps around. There's some decent level shield parts. And the stealth suit part. Before we activate gates, let's investigate more of what's in this area. Unfortunately, these bloodstains lead us to a corpse. Who died in here? Yep. 
This is really amazing. He had hit a bear trap at some point and crawled into the vent with it on his leg and bled out here. There's a bandage there, so he, he just, I guess, starved to death there. God. The deaths in this world is it's awful. That's a good hint that there are other traps around here. Let's have a bacon cheese sandwich. And let's do combat. Because he's right here. I want to say there's a trap right here somewhere. Oh, and his robot friend, Chop Chop, who has a unique uh, graphic for a robot, has seen us. A 62% chance to hit is not a good chance to hit. He's very dodgy. Can we set him on fire, though? Yes, we can. Oh, he blocked the way. <laughs> Well, I won't say no to hitting them both with more fire. Uh, then we can use recurrence on Zaman. Move up. Maybe we can hit him. He's dead. 39. Ah, uh, he might not be dead. He might heal next round. Which means we have to hit him again. Okay, now he's dead. Am I dead? Who's going first? Z-Man's going first. I think Chop Chop goes next. Let's use Uncanny Dodge. Okay, glad we did that. Am I standing here and tanking this robot? Or am I going to run to the room? He's got 460 hit points. We'd have to get a crit on him. Let's slow him. And then we can stay. We got a crit on him. 72. We can then move away. Love to recurrent some of these. Whoa, look at that crit! Oh, he crits! Wow! 81 Plasma Core, Self-Conscious Module. Surely it doesn't serve the purpose it's marking to suggest. <laughs> All right. Now we can probably go back here and look at that computer system and turn on the vent so we can leave. Sorry, the gates. Activate backup power system. Unable to do so. Activate emergency gate release. All security gates opened. reason why we should not break down that armor. Now we can go ahead and open the door. There's a main defense system someplace in here, though I wonder, I don't see any, like, gun turrets like that would activate. Psychosomatic predation. A thought control ability. We'll just go ahead and sell it. You notice a small twitch of an arm that's barely attached to the man lying on the table. Three eel sandwiches. We also get some mind... We should be... Begin oh my goodness, look at all the brains. We should begin taking the mushroom brews because we can use them to purchase the, uh, the, the juice from the dude later. Mr. Raul only has a Cortec pamphlet. A short document stating the technological achievements, purpose, and journal tenets of Cortec organization. 225 experience points. I think this hints that Agent Raul wasn't really an agent. Just 
someone sent down here to die, possibly to investigate this gentleman as his first mission. I'm guessing. And he was just a throwaway guy, just like we were, sent down here to investigate what happened to Raul. And as you saw, we died a million times to those uh, coil spiders, so. Zeman also has some garbage armor. He does have the dehumanizer. We also want to get rid of this leather armor we just picked up from him. And what does this do? You can barely make out the words inscribed on the blade of this wicked old knife. Homo homini lupus. Bypasses 60% of the target's energy shield. 7% chance to cause a living target to panic for up to one turn. That makes it run away. 3% chance to inflict a bleeding wound that deals an additional 150% damage over three turns. And equip. When your taste for blood triggers, we don't have that feat, it grants an additional stack. Nice, I guess, if you're going to be using a knife user who has that. Our current weapon does four more and four more min, three more max, three more percent chance to crit, and much more critical damage bonus. So we're obviously sticking with our current knife, not this one. We will, though, pull the repair this, because it's worth a bit of cash. Okay. Bunch of knives. I like it on one of those shelves. Ooh. Uh, perception plus one night vision goggles. I forgot night vision goggles were even a thing. We'll take them and sell them. They're not very good of, of those ones. I'm not using a character who really benefit from night vision goggles anyway. We don't have any single target ranged attacks. And I don't think we care about those with a psionic user anyway. Trap detected. Good thing we didn't walk into that. Alright, viewer. That does it for that quest. I guess we can turn it in to Harlan while we're here. And in the next episode, I think we'll take his next quest. And we'll clear out Core City of the Gangs. It's going to be tricky, since we're not going to have any grenades to help me with it. I still think we make the attempt. Attempts. <laughs> we're going to die. <laughs> we're going to die again. My goodness, I love hard mode. It is significantly tougher than normal. Well, I would not have struggled nearly as much. The core spiders, I think, uh, do a little less damage, and there's less of them. But it's fun to play hard mode, despite my complaining about it occasionally. Um, you get much more experience points, since there's more things in the game, and they tend to be higher level, or tougher, which is fun. I like that. I like we, uh, they also have more hit points than normal, I think, the, these creatures. Better stat lines. Better chance to hit you and more dodge and evasion, too, on hard. But now that I've had a taste for hard mode over the summer of last year, now I can't play normal without it feeling just too easy. But dominating requires a completely different mindset than what I've got, so I won't be playing dominating. Mr. Harlan. Tim, it's a pleasure to see you, as always. I found Raul. I see. Where is he? What happened to him? I found his corpse in a facility of sorts in the northern section of the sewers. He seems to have been killed by a cannibal who didn't get a chance to eat him yet. That must have been a gruesome death. Sally, despite our best efforts, Core City still hides these demented, twisted freaks under the rug. On the other hand, if it was the Faceless that got to him, maybe his fate would have been even worse. Now tell me. Did Raul have any documents on him? I found nothing. He nods. No matter, then. You've done what was asked of you, so it's time for you to receive your first payment. Here are some Charons, and a device I think you'll find quite useful. He has you 300 Charons and an energy shield emitter. You deliver, I can say. He smiles. I have more work for you. 
What can you tell me about Praetorian Security before I take this task? Praetorian Security is owned by Chief Archibald Knight, and it can be considered the dominant security force in Core City, I can say. Still, while they claim they are the best, I have to disagree. They have the numerical advantage, but Cortex security forces have much better training and equipment. Praetorian security is so... Uh, old-fashioned. But let them have it their way. Of course, all this is between you and me, Agent. He smiles. Alright, what's my next task? This one is very serious, Agent. We've discovered that our prototype ICPD has been stolen from one of our labs, and one of our employees, Lubin Greenhorn, is a prime suspect in this matter, I can say. He vanished around the time the device disappeared, and he is one of the rare people who had easy access to the device. We're searching for the company grounds as well as the whole residential district, including his home, of course. But unfortunately, we still haven't been able to track him down. We tried keeping this whole situation quiet, but I fear we now have no other options but to pull all our resources for this one. That's where you come in. I want you to join the search for the device. While the device is of the utmost priority, Lumen himself should be brought in for questioning as well. However, should he resist, you're free to neutralize him. One more thing, Tim. Lubin, like most employees with his clearance level, has had an intradermal chip planted in his arm. So take his tracker. The chip is difficult to safely remove, but the desperate times call for desperate measures. So expect everything. The ICPD must be returned to Cortec. I repeat that one final time. Otherwise, it might fall into the wrong hands. Who is this Lubin, and why would he steal the device? He was a member of our internal security forces, someone dependable enough to have access to even the most restricted areas of this building. Not so much anymore, I can say. No one has any proof of his motives yet. We have some suspicions, but we'll set our speculations aside. Retrieval of the device is our top priority, so that's where our focus should lie, Tim. And what is the ICPD? ICPD stands for Intracranial, Intracranial Pressure Destabilizer. It is a prototype device we've been developing at the moment. Is a round shape with four small legs at the bottom and a protruding vertical piece at the top. I understand it's a bit difficult to describe, but you will easily recognize it when you see it. Imagine like a uh, uh well, it's not quite right, but like an oil extractor or rig. It's this device is placed on someone's head to extract their brain or cranium fluid. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Unfortunately, it's, uh, or fortunately, uh, it requires someone, I guess, to be, like, tied down to in order to apply it to someone's head. I was thinking or hoping that it would be more akin to the Cerebral Boar from the Torox series, if I remember that game correctly. The rest is classified. All right, thank you, Mr. Harlan. We will not need that tracking device. I know exactly where the gentleman's located. And we'll stop here. So thank you viewers for watching. Hope it was entertaining. Lots of death. <laughs> Lots of death. I guess really quick, before we call it quits, I'm hoping that the deaths show that even though I have 2,008 hours in this game, that you I can still die, especially in hard mode that I'm quite unfamiliar with. Or uh, rather, more unfamiliar with, since the last time I played it regularly was during uh, during the summer of last year. And I stopped when the cats were leaving, and then all my cancer treatments began. It's fun to struggle in this game, and I'm hoping that the deaths are entertaining for you guys to watch. I think they are, since it also shows that I'm not flawless or perfect at this game. My build is not flawless, right? Either, for example. It is not a min-max build in any shape, way, or form. I'm a hybrid caster melee combat character who didn't do any sort of min-maxing that I could have done to make things potentially a little easier for me. Well, that's cool. These two guys are talking to each other. Let's search their pockets really quick. At least one of these guys' pockets before we leave. Mr. Security Forces. Take your coins, and that will do. All right, guys. So once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you maybe in the next one. Take care, everyone.